Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Zero is less than one half, which is less than one. Now, in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system. And I'll leave that list of axioms in the description below. Now, in this video, we are going to be using axioms one, four, six, and seven. Axiom one is just the commutative law. Axiom four tells us about the real number zero. And it tells us that for all real numbers x, x plus zero is equal to x. Axiom six tells us about the real number one. We have that one is distinct from zero, and for all real numbers x, one times x is equal to x. Axiom seven tells us that every non-zero real number has a reciprocal. And we have for every non-zero real number x, there exists a real number which we call the reciprocal of x, and we denote it this way. And it has the property that x times the reciprocal of x is equal to 1. And using the concept of the reciprocal of a non-zero real number, we define the operation of division. So that given any two real numbers, a and b, where b is not equal to 0, we define a over b to be a times the reciprocal of b. Now, our real number system is equipped with a subset, which we call the set of positive real numbers, and it's denoted as r plus. And using the set of positive real numbers, we have defined the greater than relation, the less than relation, the greater than or equal to relation, and the less than or equal to relation. Right, and I've provided those details in the description below. But the important thing for this video is that given any two real numbers, a and b, a is less than b, is equivalent to saying b is greater than a, right? This is actually our definition of the less than relation. And another important property that we have proven regarding these relations is the trichotomy law. And that tells us that given any two real numbers a and b, we have a is greater than b, a is equal to b, or a is less than b. Exactly one of those is true. We've also proven several other facts regarding the ordering of the real numbers. And let me list some of those facts. We have proven one is greater than zero. We have proven given any three real numbers a, b, and c, then a is greater than b if and only if a plus c is greater than b plus c. We've also proven if a is greater than b and b is greater than c, then a is greater than c. We've proven if a times b is greater than zero, then either one, both a and b are greater than zero, or two, both a and b are less than zero. And we've proven, given real numbers a, b, and c, if a is greater than b and c is greater than zero, then c times a is greater than c times b. Now, one last thing, our definition of two is that 2 is defined to be 1 plus 1. Okay, so now let's get to proving this theorem. To start with the proof, let's first note, by L1, 1 is greater than 0. And then applying the definition of 2, L2, axiom 1 and axiom 4, we have the following. First, by definition of 2, we know that 2 is equal to 1 plus 1. And then, since 1 is greater than 0, well, according to L2, we can add 1 on both sides of this inequality. So we get 1 plus 1 is greater than 0 plus 1. And then, by axiom 1, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 0. And then, by axiom 4, 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So this tells us that 2 is greater than 1. And then, since 2 is greater than 1 and 1 is greater than 0, well then according to L3, that tells us 2 is greater than 0. So then, by the trichotomy law, since 2 is greater than 0, that tells us 2 cannot be equal to 0. So now that we know 2 is not equal to 0, well then, we can apply axiom 7 to 2, right? 
axiom seven tells us that every non-zero real number has a reciprocal. So two must have a reciprocal. And we have that two times the reciprocal of two is equal to one. And let's again note that one is greater than zero. So we have that two times the reciprocal of two is greater than zero. And now we're in a position to apply L4. So since two times the reciprocal of two is greater than zero, well then L4 tells us that one of these two is true. We have either both two and the reciprocal of two are greater than zero, or both two and the reciprocal of two are less than zero. But two is greater than zero, so we can't have option two. If option two were the case, well then we had to have two is less than zero and two is greater than zero, but that contradicts the trichotomy law. So we must have option one, which is that two is greater than zero and the reciprocal of two is greater than zero. And therefore the reciprocal of two is greater than zero. But at this point, we would like to show that the reciprocal of two is in fact equal to one over two. And to see how, well, first of all, by axiom six, the reciprocal of two is equal to one times the reciprocal of two. But then applying the definition of division, this is equal to one over two. So we see that the reciprocal of two is equal to one over two. So we can just replace reciprocal of two with one over two. Now, according to our definition of less than, this means we have zero is less than one half. So we have shown that the first inequality is true. So now we wanna show that one half is less than one. Or in other words, one is greater than one half. And to do that, we use the fact that two is greater than one and the reciprocal of two is greater than zero. According to L5, if we multiply a reciprocal of two on both sides of this inequality, well then the sign of the inequality remains the same. And we're gonna to get to that the reciprocal of two times two is greater than the reciprocal of two times one. Now on the left-hand side, we have by axiom one, reciprocal of two times two is equal to two times the reciprocal of two. But remember, two times the reciprocal of two is equal to one. And on the right-hand side, well by axiom one, the reciprocal of two times one is equal to one times the reciprocal of two. But then by axiom six, one times the reciprocal of two is equal to the reciprocal of two. And as we stated earlier, reciprocal of two is equal to one half. So this shows that one is greater than one half. And so since one is greater than one half, we have one half is less than one. Since one half is greater than zero, we have zero is less than one half. But something I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video is that this is really just shorthand for saying zero is less than one half and one half is less than one. And so we're done. This completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.